be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord God. Now on that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus approached and began to walk along with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing Jesus, who asked them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? By now they were near the village they were going to, and Jesus appeared to be going further. But they said eagerly, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When they were at the table, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus, who immediately vanished from their sight. This is the gospel of hope. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Please be seated. And if you would again join with me in a moment of prayer and meditation and in asking for the God that we believe in to surround us and to bless us with this word, let us pray. Almighty and beloved one, we give you thanks this day. We thank you for gathering us in this place, for surrounding us by your Spirit and enabling us to be open, open enough to engage with you and with our spirituality. Uh, we're grateful for Jesus who lived and moved among us and who is present this day as we invite that spirit to awaken us, to revive us, to renew us, to strengthen us for this journey. So help, O oh God that we might know you, recognize you, and live more fully into you, that we might be ambassadors of good news. And so now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, we are two weeks into a new sermon series here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ that we have been sharing these last couple of weeks following the Easter celebration. Uh, we might remember Easter as a time when we came together to celebrate the resurrected Christ. And for many of us, and for many within the, the world, uh, Lent, which was the season before Easter, uh, was an opportunity for people to think about their own faith and about their own journey. Uh, to think about the ways in which we encounter the risen Christ of Easter. In, in fact, in many traditions, and specifically in the Roman Catholic tradition, uh, Lent is used for those who are looking to re-engage their faith, to come back to their faith. And many people take that opportunity, that time of giving up, self-reflection, and coming to a fuller understanding of where they are on life's journey. Uh, they take that opportunity to come back to church, because on Easter Sunday, of course, the church is so full that they can slip in and slip out without anyone ever noticing. <laughs> 
it really is a, a chance for us to engage our spirituality and to find where we are on life's journey. And after Easter, of course, it is a time for us to build on those foundational blocks of our own faith, to build on the experience of Lent and Easter, and to find within us where we are on life's journey, where we are in our own relationship with God, and to build those foundational blocks of faith. That is the sermon series that we're engaged with now at Cathedral of Hope, thinking about those foundational blocks and if you have been observant and seen the graphic that we're using for this post-Easter celebration, you will see that they are indeed Lego figures um, of the staff of Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. And so you're welcome. You can go back at any time and you can figure out which is which in the clergy staff of Cathedral. And perhaps there may even be a competition at the end to figure out who is who. But those foundational blocks are important for us as for many of us, we go through the highs and lows of our faith and so many of us find those foundational blocks help us in times of need and in the times of plenty. They help us to understand that our faith is a journey. It's not a one and done experience. It is something that continues throughout our lives experience and that we evolve just as human beings, our faith evolves in the fullness of an understanding of a Christ who dwelt among us. Last Sunday, we became witnesses of this risen Christ. And if you remember rightly, it was the story of Thomas, the doubter, who was confronted by Jesus. You remember the story where the disciples met the risen Christ in the upper room, but Thomas was not with them that day. The disciples who tried to convince Thomas that they had met the risen Christ in that upper room, Thomas said that unless I see the, the, the place where the, the nails went and unless I put my hand in the place where the spear went, I, I won't believe. And Jesus returns to them a week later in that same upper room and Thomas is with them that day and it says that Jesus said to Thomas, come, put your, put your finger into the nail marks, put your hand into the side. And Thomas comes to believe. He became a witness of the risen Christ. And last week, we were challenged to become witnesses ourselves. Just like Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of God, first went to the tomb that day to discover the tomb was empty, they were witnesses to those early disciples. And we too have been encouraged to find and to know the risen Christ ourselves so that we might be believers, that we might know that this risen Christ stands among us this day. And we bear witness to that story. We bear witness through the very attributes of our own lives, our own experience of God. Today we move in the story of the disciples who encountered Jesus on the road to Emmaus, you heard the story for us this morning, read so beautifully by Metsy, reminding us of those disciples who were journeying away from Jerusalem. It says they were about seven miles out of Jerusalem. And as they were journeying, perhaps a little consumed by the events of the past week, consumed with their own failure to understand and to doubt and to try to make sense of the story of this Jesus who they believed in, this Jesus who had healed many, this Jesus who had done many miracles, and this Jesus who yet had hung on a cross and heard the stories of a resurrection. Perhaps they were fearful that they might be next. Perhaps they were fearful of their own journey. But it says that they were journeying on the road to Emmaus, about seven miles out. And it says that suddenly they were confronted by a stranger who walked alongside them that day. And Jesus, who was perhaps, uh, was, was definitely hidden from their sight, figuratively, personally, it says that they began to have a conversation with this, this, this Jesus who was stood among them. And they said, Jesus said to them, but... What are you talking about? I, I just imagine Jesus having a little bit of a play with these disciples. You know, what it is that you're talking about? Because, of course, Jesus knew what they were talking about. But it says that Jesus says to the disciples, what are you talking about? And the disciples said to back to this stranger who stood among them and said, have you the only one in the whole of Jerusalem who has not heard of the story of things that had just come to pass? And Jesus encouraged them to tell him the story 
to perhaps confirm the story, to hear the story fresh from their own ears as they became witnesses to this risen Christ. And it says in their journey, they failed to recognize that this was Jesus standing with them. I don't know about you, but this story has always confused me just a little bit. It's confused me a little bit because if the disciples had really journeyed with Jesus, if these two disciples had known Jesus, if this, these two disciples had witnessed to Jesus, how come they didn't recognize him as they stood among him that day? How come they didn't recognize that this was the same Jesus that they had borne witness to just a few days before? It's confused me because I don't understand how they did not recognize Jesus. But I've come to a better understanding of this story, friends. I've come to a better understanding of this story that it wasn't that they didn't necessarily recognize Jesus, but that there are times in our own lives when we get so consumed by ourselves, by our own story, by what's going on in our lives that we fail to recognize anything or anybody beyond our own experience. That so many of us get so consumed with life and its concerns and its worries and at times just so full of ourselves that you could put Jesus right there next to me right this very morning and I probably wouldn't recognize him. Perhaps that was what was going on for those disciples that day. They were so consumed by the story, perhaps consumed by their own fear, perhaps consumed by their own worries of that day, that even Jesus standing among them that day was unrecognizable. I'm also very much aware that in our own stories, in our own lives, there are many times when Jesus has journeyed with us in our own journeys that we too have failed to recognize the presence of God right next to us. And that for many of us, when we are so consumed with life and the injustice, sometimes poverty, hunger, all the circumstances that we face in our lives, that even when Jesus comes to our aid, it is hard for us to recognize it was in that breaking of the bread, in the journey when Jesus took those disciples at their word and shared meal with them at the end of the day. It was in that moment when he broke bread and he raised the cup that they finally recognized that it was Jesus with them all the time. I know in my own life, and I know perhaps in your own lives, that it is in the breaking of the bread and in the raising of the cup that we finally have an interruption to our story. That sometimes something has to happen to move us beyond ourselves to truly recognize the Jesus that has stood with us all the time. And perhaps even in our own lives, in our own circumstances, Jesus is offering us every opportunity to recognize that he is with us and sometimes we just need to get out of ourselves in order to fully recognize the Jesus and the presence of God living with us. Perhaps that was what was happening for those disciples that day. Perhaps in their own moment, they needed a, an opportunity to get out of themselves, to get out of their fear, to get out of whatever was going on for them in order to recognize that Jesus was present. In my own life, I know that sometimes Jesus shows up in some of the most difficult people of my life. <laughs> you know those people. The people that kind of test you, test your patience, perhaps taste your own, test your own willingness to know that there's something in you that needs to be changed. You, you know those people, we call them EGRs, extra grace required peoples. <laughs> Ever, ever experienced those people in your life? Where, where you know, you, you just want to run in the other direction, but they just seem to be appearing next to you all the time? Those, those extra grace... Now, I acknowledge that there are times when I need extra grace in my life from people who perhaps I pester too much. But I also acknowledge that there are people who I have to extend extra grace, and it's the patience of a saint. 
Those extra grace required people. So I, I also know that there are times in my life when, when I am entertaining strangers and perhaps I'm entertaining angels. That perhaps the people who test me the most, perhaps the people who, who make me look at myself the most are really the presence of Jesus in them that is calling me out of myself to discover something new. And perhaps that is what Jesus was trying to teach those disciples that day. That the, the physical Jesus would eventually arise and ascend into heaven, but that the, we need to find opportunities in our lives where we can still recognize Jesus, even when we don't recognize that it's Jesus standing among us. But perhaps there are moments in our lives where we need to think beyond just the physical, perhaps beyond just those things that we recognize to find Jesus in the unrecognizable. You know, the people who challenge us, the circumstances that stretch us, the things of our own lives that we perhaps want to avoid, and yet perhaps it is Jesus offering us an opportunity to grow and to deepen our faith experience, to deepen our reliability on this one we call God. Perhaps as those disciples traveled towards Emmaus that day, they needed the presence of Jesus, not the Jesus that they could then just suddenly throw all their concerns and worries on, but the Jesus who would help them to know peace. The Jesus that ultimately would break bread and raise the cup so that they might recognize Jesus in that very act. Perhaps they needed to be hidden from the presence so that they could find the Jesus that lives within them, not just the Jesus that lived in the person we call Jesus. And perhaps for us this day, as we build our faith, not on a physical Jesus who is still with us, perhaps we too need to recognize Jesus in ourselves and to recognize Jesus in others. And to perhaps recognize Jesus in the folks that we don't want to recognize Jesus at all. That yes, bless their hearts. We say that in a very Texas way this morning. To think about those folks and how we might have a little more compassion, a little bit more kindness towards those that are perhaps the most challenging to us. Or perhaps that we are the most challenging to others. <laughs> to find that compassion, to find that kindness. Here at Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, when we do a, a wedding, often there is a moment where I'm given the opportunity to offer some words of wisdom as if I have any words of wisdom to give to married couples. But there is a moment in the service where I'm offered an opportunity to give some words of wisdom. And I simply say this. When you disagree, do it kindly. For when you forgive, a little bit more compassion and a little bit more kindness enters in. It gives us the opportunity to stretch beyond our need to be right and to find ways in which we might find the balance and harmony in our lives and in our relationships. Perhaps that's what Jesus was trying to teach those disciples on the road to Emmaus. Perhaps that's what Jesus is trying to teach us as we move and have our being in this world to live gently, to live kindly, to find the Jesus in us that will also impact the Jesus in others, to find the Christ in you that greets the Christ in me, and to move beyond just this necessity to always have something physical in our presence, but rather to look for the spiritual in each and every one of us to find that hope and that cause to generate compassion and kindness toward one another, and to find that recognizing Jesus in each other will always stretch us and always move us and always challenge us. Because we usually only want to see the Jesus in us, or perhaps the Jesus in those that we like, or perhaps the Jesus in those that we agree with, or perhaps the Jesus in those who share our theology, rather than finding the Jesus in all peoples, 
in those that we perhaps entertain as strangers who come among us. I always remind our ushers and greeters every single morning that when a new person enters in this building, we may be entertaining strangers. We may be entertaining Jesus. And how do we make sure that all people, whether they've been here once or a thousand times, always know that we are recognizing Jesus in them so that there may be opportunity for a place at the table for every single one of us. So this morning, as Jesus travels on that road to Emmaus with the disciples and they fail to recognize him for that moment, know that Jesus will always reveal Jesus' self to us in the breaking of the bread, in the raising of the cup, in the ways that we extend compassion and peace to each other, in the ways that we live our lives. For it is in the living of our lives that not only do we become more Christ-like in all of our ways, but we get to recognize Jesus in others in the same way that they get to recognize Jesus in us. So may our faith be strengthened and our lives be emboldened to live dangerously in the ways of Jesus who comes among us this morning and who says, peace be with you who comes among us this morning in the breaking of the bread and of the raising of the cup and the feeding of our lives. May that Jesus be the invitation this day to recognize the Jesus in us all. And not just to recognize it, but to celebrate it. To celebrate our uniqueness and our beauty and our differences even in those that we want to say, bless your heart. <laughs> May it be so this day and in the days to come as we build the blocks of our faith that will help us to recognize Jesus. God bless you. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen.
to God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God, known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.